This is lesson 5-2, which is properties of exponents and radicals. Our essential question is, how can properties of exponents and radicals be used to rewrite radical expressions? So this first table, I didn't write in the notes, but I wanted to include it in our video because this is just kind of a re review of our different properties of, of exponents that you learned in Algebra 1. So... Um, if this is something that you would like to have to refer to, I would pause this and kind of write these down. So product of powers means if we're multi multiplying things with like bases, we add the exponents. Quotient, if we're dividing things with like bases, we subtract the exponents. Power of a power, we multiply the exponents. Power of a product, we can distribute the power to both things inside the parentheses. And a negative exponent means we um, it's we flip the value to the denominator, but if it's negative in the denominator, we flip it to the numerator. Okay? So our first example is how can you rewrite the expression using properties of exponents? So if we have 81 to the 5 sixth times 81 to the negative 1 third, these are both the same base of 81, so that means we can add the exponent since we're multiplying. So this would be 81, and if we add 5 sixths, plus negative one-third, so we know that negative one-third is the same as two-sixth. So five-sixth minus two-sixth would be three-sixth, which is 81 to the one-half. And then we know 81 to the one-half is just saying, what's the square root of 81, which is nine. Okay, and then our second example here, my first step is I'm going to distribute that two-thirds to every single um, term inside. So this would be x to the two-thirds, y, if I multiply three times two-thirds, I just get y squared, and then x, so if I take one-half times two-thirds, because it's a power to a power, that would become two-sixths, which is the same as one-third. And then I can use my properties of exponents, and if I have an x in the numerator and the denominator, that's division. So we would subtract the exponent, so 2 thirds minus 1 third is just 1 third. And then I can rewrite this as y squared times the cube root of x. Okay, our next example is example 2. So how can we rewrite the, the nth root of ab using the properties of exponents? So if I have the nth root of AB, I can rewrite that as A times B to the 1 over N, and then I can distribute that, so be A to the 1 over N, B to the 1 over N, and then I can put them back into radical form, so this would be the nth root of A times the nth root of B. Okay, and then now we have ones with um, values. So if I want to do the cube root of 16, x to the fifth power. So if I'm factoring 16, I get 4 and 4. This is 2 and 2, 2 and 2. So if our index is 3, that means I need 3 in a group. So I'm going to take out 3 2s. And then if I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's, I need 3 x's. So this would turn into 2 x, comes on the outside, and then left with the cube root underneath would be the 2 and x squared because that's what was left that was not factored and not circled. Okay, our next example is we are going to rewrite the product or quotient of a radical. So if I have the fifth root of 16 times the fifth root of 8, that would just be the fifth root of 128. And then I'm going to do this over here. So I have space. So 128 we know is 16 and 8. 16 is 4 and 4. 8 is 4 and 2. This would be 2 and 2, 2 and 2, 2 and 2. Okay, so we have the fifth root. So there's five, we need five twos. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we have the 4 left over. So this would be the Oops. This would be 2 times the fifth root of 4. 
Okay, and then B says, so we have the sixth root of 8x times the third root of 2x. So what we want to do is we want to be able to get them to be the same um, root so we can put them all under the same one. So this would be 8x to the 1 -sixth times 2x to the 1 -third. So then I'm going to change that 1 -third into 2 sixths, which we know is equivalent. And then I am going to rewrite this with, so we're going to say 8x times 2x. We're going to bring the 2 in just with the 2x, and then we're going to raise the whole thing to the 1 -sixth. So by doing that, we can write this as the 6th root. We can multiply on the inside. So this would be um, 2 squared, so that would be 4 times 8 would be 32x to the 3rd power. Okay, and then our last one, we have cube root of 2n over 9m. So what we're going to do for that is, first step is I'm going to break it up into the cube root of 2n over the cube root of 9m. And then um, I want to rationalize the denominator. So what rationalizing the denominator means is I want to multiply by something that's going to get rid of the radical in the denominator. So since this is a cube root, I want to think of how, what can I multiply it by that it would make everything inside the cube root um, be able to be simplified and no more cube root. So I'm going to multiply by the cube root of, so nine is already three times three. If I add another three in there, then it's going to be 27, which is the perfect cube, and it will be, th so I'm going to do cube root of 3, and then I have 1m here. I want two more, so that way it's going to multiply to something that does not, no longer has the radical. Okay, so on the top, they're both cube roots, so we have the cube root of 2 times 3 is 6, and then it'd be m squared n. And on the bottom, we would have the cube root of 27m cubed. So that the reason for doing that, again, is on the top, we can't simplify anything. But on the bottom, the cube root of 27 is just 3, and the cube root of m cubed is just m. So by doing that, we rationalize the denominator. We got rid of the radical in the denominator. Okay, our next example, adding and subtracting rational expressions. So you can see none of these are in common terms. So what we need to do is simplify them so that we can add or subtract. So we know 20 is 4 and 5, 4 is 2 and 2. So this would be 2 squared of 5. 16 is 4 and 4, 2 and 2, 2 and 2. And this is a cube root, so we need 3. So this would be 2 cube root of 2. 250 is 25 and 10. 25 is 5 and 5. 10 is 5 and 2. So this would be 5 cube root of 2. And then minus square root of 5. Okay, so now we have a square root of 5 and a square root of 5. And we have cube root of 2 and cube root of 2. So they have to be like terms in order for us to combine them. So we have 2 square root of 5 minus square root of 5. So that would just be square root of 5. And then we have negative 2 cube root of 2 plus 5 cube root of 2. So that would be 3 cube root of 2. So that would be our final answer. Okay, the next part is multiplying binomial um, radical expressions. So if we're going to multiply, okay, we're going to multiply um, cube root of 7 times 2. That would be 2 cube root of 7. And then we're going to subtract. So if we have square root of, so we have square cube root of 7 times the cube root of 49. That would be the cube root of 7 times 49, which is 343. Well, we know that the cube root of 343 is going to be just 7, so this would simplify to 2 cube root of 7 minus 7. 
And then for part B, we're going to FOIL this out. So this would be 2x times 2x would be 4x squared. And then we'd have 2 times negative square root of 3, so it would be minus 2 square root of 3x. And then negative square root of 3 times 2x would be negative 2 square root of 3x. And then negative square root of 3 times negative square root of 3, the square roots cancel, so it would just be plus 3. So we could simplify this to 4x squared minus 4 square root of 3x plus 3. Okay, and our final one is again another rationalizing the denominator. So we're going to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator. So we have 2 plus the square root of 5. We're going to multiply it by 2 minus the square root of 5. So it's the difference of squares that we know when we multiply out difference of squares, it cancels the middle terms. So in the numerator here, we have 2 minus square root of 5. And then in the denominator, we have 2 times 2 is 4. And then we're going to have plus 2 square root of 5 minus 2 square root of 5. And then we have square root of 5 times negative square root of 5 would be minus 5. So what happens here is those cancel. That's the purpose of multiplying by the conjugate. And so then we have 2 minus square root of 5. And then we're going to have 4 minus 5 would be negative 1. So then to simplify this, because it's just a negative 1, we could divide both parts by negative 1. So this would be negative 2 plus square root of 5. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions on any of those.